everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Trustees April 27th, 2020 budget adoption meeting. Will everyone please salute the flag? <laughs> Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. of the United, United States, States, States of America, America. and, America. and the, the Republic, Republic which is for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God one nation, individual, liberty, 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 liberty justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Jamelie, please call the roll. Like <laughs> Trustee Andino. Present. Trustee Lang. Present. Trustee Howell. Present. Trustee Lee. Mayor Luisi. I am present. And present. Okay. <laughs> uh, tonight we have uh, one public hearing. And that public hearing is to consider a proposed local law repealing local law number three of 2019 which authorized a year-ending 2021 budget to exceed the New York State tax cap. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second, please? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Lang. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Trustee mm -hmm. Lee? Mayor Luisi. I am in favor. In um, favor. Okay. There's an echo. There's a delay here. There's a delay, yeah. Uh, David, anyone in the room? Any anyone? Delay echo. Uh, there are a couple of attendees. Um, if they'd like to speak, they okay, yes. This can is I you? say uh, to, uh, anyone in the public, this is your First opportunity to address the board on any agenda items. Well, this is the public hearing you just opened. Ah, that's true. <clears throat> Sorry. Jumping the gun. Do we have any comments? Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to make a motion to close this public hearing. Do I have a second? So moved. Trustee yeah. Andino. In favor. Trustee Lang. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And it is at this time that is, um, if anyone in the public would like to address the board on any agenda items. Okay. None being so, I'm going to move forward on our resolutions and Resolution is number one, authorizing a proposed local law, repealing local law number three of 2019, which authorized the year ending 2021 budget to exceed the New York State tax cap. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Lang. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. I think she might have lost confidence. In favor. I, I'm not sure. Mayor Luisi. I am in favor. Uh, resolution number two is authorizing the adoption of the fiscal year June 1, 2020 through May 31. 2020, 2021 village budget with the following modifications. Um, and what I'd like to do is just simply say that we reduced expenditures in this budget to the tune of $94,750. Um, the particular lines that um, were affected pertain to street maintenance, personnel services, part-time street maintenance, police department overtime, as well as a capital, capital expenditures. Um, and before we go any further, will David or Brian please bring the public up to speed as to what this budget entails? 
Yeah, just real quickly, um, I, I, I didn't want to say this, but our board members had a you know, really interesting conversation on Saturday about the uh, a fake fair budget. And why we say that is, is because this budget, while it's a fair budget, it's a good plan going forward. Um, it's really interesting what's going on out there is that even when the moment this is adopted and June 1st rolls around, we know that we can't just go out there and spend money. Um, we really have to look at a lot of these revenue lines really have to go through each of these expenditures uh, month after month, making sure we kind of stay on target. It's a, it's a whole new world out there, but this budget is kind of a, it's a good plan in place for today, but I know that a week from now and a month from now, it's, it's, it's gonna have to be really looked at and really you know, modified going forward. But I think it's, it's, it's fair in regards to what we have and what we're dealing with right now. Thank you, David. So in other words, we're working with what information we have available us now, moving forward. Okay. Um, does would any of the board members like to comment on this time, or do you want to, would you like to wait? I'll wait. Okay. Well, then, um, may I make a motion to adopt the uh, budget? for fiscal year June 1, 2020 through May 31st, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Landino. In favor. Trustee Lang. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. I'm in favor as well. Um, at this time, are there any board members, please, at this time, if you'd like to make a comment, I will uh, turn to Trustee Andino first. Okay. Um, as, as David mentioned, the budget process for the village, um, really like any other organization, doesn't end with the adoption of the budget that's in front of us. Instead, it's a living document that has to be monitored and amended and as needed throughout the year. And this holds true now more than ever, given the current crisis in the world, the country, the state, the county, and right here in our beloved Tuckahoe. The COVID-19 pandemic is a public health and financial crisis that will touch us long after it's resolved. Prior to the impact of this crisis, we had already been grappling with the fact that the delay of the hotel would, uh, opening would result in lost tax revenue for the village, we were already looking at what the impact of our sewer and light infrastructure would be, as well as a reduction in the budgeted meter revenues. Within the last four to five weeks, we have been hit hard and we didn't see it coming. First and foremost, we have all been impacted in some way, but I want to acknowledge those who tested positive and are suffering with COVID-19, as well as those 962 people in Westchester County who lost their lives to this disease and their loved ones who are now left to grieve. Having said that, we as a board, along with David Burke, our village administrator and department heads, must also look at the financial impact of this crisis and continuously monitor our budget in the months and years to come and strategize for the future. We currently have no meter and permit revenue coming in and getting things back up and running will take some planning. I'm really grateful that the village had a fund balance, a savings to fall back on, but we also have to look at the ways that we'll have to build it back up as we move forward. So I really want to thank all of the village leadership staff and staff as well as the board for the sometimes spirited discussions as we grapple to make tough decisions during a time such as this. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Andino, very well said. Deputy Mayor Lang. Yes, uh, first I wanna start by thanking all the heads uh, of the departments for help in uh, streamlining this year's budget. I just wanna start by saying that uh, this budget process is the most important thing we do as trustees in this village, and it's something I take very seriously. Uh, so in regards to this year's budget, We've diligently been uh, working on it line by line and believe we put together a reasonable and fiscally responsible budget. All the while protecting our fund balance, we have put ourselves in the best possible position to fight the financial shortfall that um, Trustee O'Meyer had just mentioned. Um, we have been able to do this without layoffs and without cuts to services. 
uh, early in the process, myself and Trustee Lee suggested that we bond for as many capital expenditures as possible, uh, knowing that we can take advantage of these low interest rates and uh, even possibly refinance any existing loans that we may have out there currently. Um, so our, our bond rating has just been increased, uh, making now the best time to take advantage of these favorable interest rates. Um, these efforts help to lower taxes from our preliminary budget and as a result, the tax increase will be uh, just over half a percent, 0.67 to be exact. Uh, if I had it my way, and if not for this financial cloud hanging over our heads and our villages unsure our future, I would have dipped into the fund balance and made it zero. However, I pledge to continue building our fund balance to enable next year's budget to be as low and perhaps even lower. Uh, once in a while, the unexpected happens, such as this virus. I want residents to know that I'm focused on keeping a lid on taxes during these difficult times, as so many families are just trying to get by. Furthermore, I've joined forces with the mayor and decided to take the $5,000 stipend I received and put it back into our local businesses. So quickly, just to recap, the budget is coming well under the tax levy. We've done this while maintaining the services we all come to enjoy, and best of all, without layoffs. We will continue to invest in our infrastructure, such as our roads, sidewalks and curbs, and the upgrading of our parks. We look forward to continue our advancement regarding environmental friendly initiatives, as well as many other projects that, we, that, that take place, uh, that are going on right now, that make Tuckahoe a great place to live. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to uh, mention um, before I go, um, our condolences go out to uh, our town councilman's family, as many of you know, we lost our councilman, Glenn Belito, one of the most caring, gentle, and encouraging men I've ever met. To him and his daughter, we are so sorry. Um, also, um, <clears throat> the Solano family. Police officer Anthony Solano lost his mother-in-law, Joan Campin. Again, we are so sorry for their loss. And lastly, uh, as Trustee and Dino had mentioned at our last meeting, our thoughts and prayers are also with the family of longtime resident Tommy Logan. We are so sorry. No, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Mm -hmm. Trustee Howard, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as everybody's mentioned, it's it's really probably been the most difficult uh, budgeting exercise maybe in the history of our village. Um, we couldn't have anticipated this pandemic, but that's exactly why we need a reserve. Actually, uh, fund reserves are meant to um, to facilitate a uh, a short term fluctuation in finances, and actually, what we have now is something much worse. So, I would say that the fund balance, the reserve balance, should never be zero ever. It would be a dangerous thing. Um, so, I'm so glad to uh, uh, mostly to our administrator uh, David Burke, um, who worked diligently since he was hired. To put that in place for us. If we did not have that, David, um, it would be tragic. So thank you for that. Um, and for uh, everybody who voted on the, the budget since then. Um, so it's an unconventional time and in an unconventional time we can make unconventional decisions. Um, uh, Trustee Andino mentioned at the last uh, meeting that um, uh, we have different decisions we can make with our stipend uh, that we get as trustees. So uh, I think after the last meeting, we decided that those of us who would like to give it back to the village or not collect it this year, um, we have that option by uh, writing a letter uh, to uh, David and Ryan and letting them know that. Um, but we'll keep that on the budget. And it's important to keep that on the budget line because it's important to offer a stipend to the trustee position. Um, for some of us, it may not be a make or break situation, but um, it's often used by people who take uh, the trustee position to um, help offset a lot of the uh, charitable events that we go to to, to um, support Takaho, um, you know, and a variety of different costs. So I think it's really important to offer that stipend to people because we don't want people, only people to be trustees who, who don't need the stipend. So we'll keep it in the budget line because it's important. Um, as uh, Trustee Lang mentioned, we moved some things uh, into a capital, um, some capital things into uh, a gear for um, uh, looking at doing a bond in the future. 
um, and a couple of the other uh, board folks have already mentioned that we, you know, we know we have um, to look at sewer repair and our traffic light system repair. In addition, we're also looking forward to the future um, to put money in there to do uh, a new master plan, which is really critical to okay. something that we've been talking about for a long time. So we're looking forward uh, to working on that. And then lastly, I just wanted to say, you know, I would have never anticipated that uh, I would use my experience as a scientist in infectious disease as in my position as a trustee of the board. And, um, uh, you know, at the beginning of this, when it was clear in the data what was going to happen, um, there were, we had some spirited discussions and I know I, I probably wasn't popular in saying things like, I think we should consider um, advocating to postpone the election. Uh, I was advocating for closing East Chester schools when Tuckahoe schools had been closed. Um, you know, and then we had to make a difficult decision to close the parks. And I think it was probably the most, these were the most impactful decisions we've made. Um, postponing that election uh, and, you know, and I lobbied heavily uh, to our state and county representatives for that. And I am so glad that we did not conduct that. I mean, I think even what we've seen from the Wisconsin election, it would have just been a, a disaster for us. So, so I'm very glad um, to do that. And, and I think lobbying our state and county legislators makes a difference. And we're going to ask them to do that again, because we're going to need help from them for funding for this next village um, budget session. So you know, we're all going to be planning. Uh, it's important now that we start to even that we start to think about what it's going to be like to go back to a normal life. So uh, the DPW, the police, village hall staff, uh, library and community center are all starting to think about that. And we're going to need the help of the villagers. So um, we've done a great job so far, but um, safety is our first priority for the village. So um, I just wanted to encourage uh, the village to stay engaged and to help us and uh, as we hope to transition back to something close to normal. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Hall. Trustee Lee. Okay, first off, I want to express my condolences to those who have lost a loved one during this pandemic. Also, if you're fighting the virus, I pray for a speedy recovery. As you know, this past Saturday, we were very productive on finalizing the budget. However, it's not a normal time right now. We are being hit emotionally, physically, and financially. This virus has caused numerous illnesses, has shut down our local businesses, and has our restaurants fighting to stay open all within a few short months. As elected officials, this time of year, the um, working on the budget is the main priority. And now, with all that's going on, we need to help our residents and businesses more than ever. The budget is pretty solid at this time, and I have to say we are very fortunate that we have a strong fund balance. We did not lay off any employees, which was a goal. However, we did have, have to do some cuts a little here and there from departments. I am sure the department heads understand and I personally want to say thank you. And I also want to thank David Burke and Ryan Rueda for all your help. Without you guys, we couldn't have done what we've done. Also, I want, along with, I, along with Deputy Mayor Lang, suggested to remove capital expenditures from our budget and bond for them at a lower interest rate, along with refinance old bonds into a lower interest rate bond, which would, have, which would save on interest and expense. Furthermore, I have decided, along with Mayor Luisi and Deputy Mayor Lang, to donate my stipend of $5,000 that I received from the village to local businesses to help them get on their feet. All these efforts I have mentioned help lower taxes from the preliminary budget, and as a result, the tax increase will be 0.667%. My main goal as your trustee was to do all I can to help the budget be below the tax cap, and we have succeeded that as for now. I am so proud of our accomplishments because we, because we did without taking away all the wonderful things that we love about Tuckahoe. Please join us in helping out our local restaurants, bakeries, and delis during this horrific time. Be well and stay safe, Tuckahoe. That's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Lee. So now I come along and it sounds like I copied notes from everybody that came to <laughs> me. Well, in my defense, I have it written down so I could always prove it. But anyway, uh, seriously, 
this past February, the New York State Controller issued an analysis via the fiscal stress monitoring system regarding the village's financial condition. It's narrow in scope, but it measured the fiscal stress from a budgetary solvency perspective. And this analysis simply asked the question, does the local government generate enough revenues to meet expenditures? We received a no designation score in two categories, which means there was no financial stress to the village and innovative event efforts to increase revenue were providing positive results. Moody's just last week upgraded the village from an A2 rating to A1, some of those reasons being improvement to our reserves and an increased tax-based valuation. The last three months of this current budget, March, April, and May, will have seen an estimated loss in revenue and an amount close to $300,000. It is fortunate that we have a substantial fund balance that will be able to backfill this unanticipated loss due to COVID-19. The budget being presented tonight began at a tax cap of 2.55%, which translated to $78.21 for the average homeowner assessed at $7,500. Mind you, we did not have the virus at that time, but we did know, as was mentioned earlier, that we did have two serious events coming in our revenue line. Um, so many serious issues were discussed by the members of this board as to how to mitigate the impact of today's current situation on village taxpayers, while also keeping an eye on future budgets. Tough decisions had to be made. An open position in DPW caused by attrition has not been backfilled. The hiring of part-time seasonal workers will be severely curtailed and sidewalk repairs will be impacted. I applaud the entire board who have dedicated their stipends back to the village and community as a show of solidarity with all the residents and business owners. I applaud all our village employees in every department for coming to work every day and continuing to provide services without missing a beat despite the virus. The focus was to maintain essential services and current full-time staffing levels. We have achieved that and managed to decrease the tax levy to 1.39%. which translate, as was mentioned earlier, which is a tax rate per thousand dollars of less than 1%. So in other words, the same owner that I mentioned previously will now be paying $28.78 in taxes to the village. Meanwhile, we still continue to maintain a healthy fund balance as of right now. However, the following months are filled with uncertainty. Will revenues begin to rise? Will Washington pass a stimulus package that will send money to villages and to help them recover from their financial losses? This budget may very well be revisited several times throughout the coming year with modifications being made depending on our economic recovery. So in closing, I'd like to thank all our department heads for presenting sensible and financially sound budgets. Many thanks to our village treasurer, Ryan Rueda, for his hard work and dedication. And lastly, to David Burke for overseeing the entire budget process. And that's that, as they say. Um, let's bring us to miscellaneous business. And our next village board meeting will be May 11th at 7 p.m.
Uh, David, I, seeing as I'm still operating on the phone, do we have any members of the public or department heads in the in the room that would like to speak to the board, address the public? There are members of the public that if they'd like to speak, uh, they should go ahead, I think. Okay. Are there any members of the public in the room who would like to speak, make Hi, a comment? Sure, Mike Dardano from Tucko. I have a question regarding the uh, this donation to the businesses. Um, is this, when you say donation, how is that going to work? Are you going to uh, donate directly to businesses or are you going to purchase something, you take the money and then purchase something for yourself? How is that going to work? I'm just curious. Or is it a direct donation and how are you going to pick what businesses you're going to donate it to if you're going to donate? Good. Are you speaking? Are you asking me? Uh, I think I think what I heard Gina say, because I'm sorry, I, I, I had to, I'm late, but I think I heard Gina say she was going to donate to business, like you said last week, Greg, and then Danny said the same thing. So I'm curious how that's going to work. Like, what do you mean by a donation? Well, what we're doing is ded I'm dedicating my stipend to the local restaurants here in Tucko. So are you just going to give them the money, You're going to break it up? Uh, by like to figure there's 10 or 15 restaurants and then just donate it to them directly? No, it's going to be a two to three times a week that I will frequent those businesses and purchase food from those businesses. All right. Well, technically, just to not to be a pain in the neck with semantics, but that's not really a donation in the true sense of a word. It's a dedication of the that, that money that you're getting to the businesses, but it's not like a donation like you would for to do for a nonprofit or something. So I think semantically, it's not really a donation; it's a dedication. Well, to money. yeah, Mr. Dardano, you're absolutely right. Um, that's why uh, I believe what we said was we um, we decided to take the five thousand dollars stipend and put it back into our local businesses. Um, I'm not sure who used the word donate, but put it back into the local businesses is, is ultimately what I'll be doing. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you're, you're absolutely right, uh, Deputy Mayor Lang. The word is dedicated that I just used, yeah. not donate. Mm -hmm. And that applies to all the trustees. The trustees, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I, what I said was I implored the entire board who have dedicated their stipends back to the village and community. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, uh, <laughs> I'll be donating my uh, stipend back to the village and I will be still eating, you know, uh, more than I should out at the uh, restaurants every month, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to clarify it. And you know, it would be good if you could, I mean, that might be a pain in the neck, but it would be great to, especially to report to the chamber uh, where, where you uh, dedicated that money to, that would, be, that would be nice. So we could tell uh, the board of the, of the um, chamber, oh, by the way, uh, X number of, uh, whether it's dollars or who you, who you dedicated it to, because that would be a nice, uh, a nice thing to, uh, to show the chamber and to show our uh, businesses. We can talk about it like at our next meeting and stuff and going forward, so. That, that's a great point, Mike. Right, you know, you, Dan, you can say uh, whoever it is, you know, whether it's, you know, and if you went to the florist or whatever, but if it's dedicated to the restaurants, uh, that they need that help and just being able to keep telling us who they were would be, um, I think would be a good thing. Good for the chamber members too. Be a good example for other, other uh, government officials to see that uh, having uh, Omira and Renee dedicated back to the village. If you guys decide you're going to dedicate it to, you know, you're doing it for the restaurants, that's that's fine. And how how you spent it or who you spent it on would be great. So we could well, kind of promote that. Again, I'm going to speak for myself, Mike. I don't go out to eat in Tuckahoe three times a week, nor do I go to Carvel on a regular basis. But I am now making a concerted effort to do those things. So um, and I'll make sure he runs more. <laughs> yes, <David. laughs> I, I know but, you better walk there, Greg. No driving. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to Carvel. I just left Pasquale's uh, this afternoon. Uh, yesterday, I, one of these past days where I tucked away, the day before that, Villaggio's. These are things that normally, in the normal course of my year, I would not be going to the, this many Tuckahoe restaurants within that week span. So. Sure. 
Okay. And again, that's good. I would much rather, I mean, I know um, that businesses are struggling and I think that every bit of business they can get is a, is a big benefit to them. But anyway. Okay. That's all. I just wanted to check that. Thank you. Thank you. You're and Mike, welcome. Mike, just to, um, to clarify, um, for me, I'm also going to be donating it back and I'll let David and Ryan know um, the way it's going to work is instead of it coming out of the line, um, because, you know, to Trustee Howell's point earlier, we don't want people to be discouraged by taking that out of the, the uh, trustee and mayor uh, stipend, I would call it, out of the budget line, um, because it's, some, it's, an, it's a small incentive. And it also should um, not be taken out because it's, it's not, quote unquote, free work. It's service, but it's not free work. And people should know that it's, it's a valued service. Um, I'm going to donate it back, but I am also, um, and I'm, you know, I'm fortunate, thankfully, that I can afford to do that. You know, I, I don't, I can't speak for anyone else's budget at home, but I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm grateful that I'm able to do that and continue to increase my, my support into the economy of Tuckahoe. So, you know, I'm also going to be increasing uh, my, my purchases and buying uh, gift cards to give to people who I know could use them. Um, so again, um, I'm just saying that to say that I want to give back to our economy and help boost our economy, but also you know, consider the residents and, and in solidarity to them, I wanna give the money back into the village. You know, when you all do that, if you wouldn't mind, you don't gonna go crazy because I know it's it can be kind of a little bit, you know, odd, but I think it'd be kind of cool if when you know when you're doing that as trustees and you want to take some pictures at you know supporting the local businesses, that would be wonderful. We'll share that on social media for the chamber. That would be very uh that would be a nice gesture to be able to do. You know, grab a picture of you guys and, and it'd be nice to do it, especially when it's I know everyone does it when they're campaigning. But to just do it to support the businesses in a in a supportive way, not because we're so to speak campaigning, I think would be wonderful and be a nice thing for us to uh, share with the chamber members. So that's just something to throw out there if you feel like doing that. Definitely. If I think of it when I'm doing it, maybe I can promise. <laughs> All right. Likewise, if if the food's that good, take my picture later. <laughs> I have, yes, I have I have made a couple of posts, you know, thanking some restaurants, but you know. Sometimes you're just hungry, you get out of work, and you just want to go eat. I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank Anyone you. else? Um, Anyone else I, from the public? Mayor Luisi, one thing we haven't talked about, but we should probably make a mention of is, you know, April is also a time when um, people get reappointed to the different boards we have. Um, that won't be happening right now because uh, the elections postponed and we, uh, you know, the guidance that's been given to us um, is to wait for those appointments until uh, the new board is elected. Mm -hmm. so I wanted yep. to mention that to folks. Thank you. Well, we still don't know. We're still waiting on Albany to give us a date for the village elections. So right. as soon as we get it, we will, I am sure, have it up there on all those social media websites. Yes, so you guys have stuck with me and Danny for a while longer. Yep, that's right. And vice versa. <laughs> Is there anyone else from the public that would like to address the board? Okay. Well, I thank, I want to thank um, everyone for, uh, for tonight. I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues on the board for their hard work on this budget. And again, thank everyone out there in the village and please everyone be safe. Please comply with the, the guidelines that are promulgated by the governor. They're working. Numbers are starting to go down. They are going down, but let's keep it that way. So uh, once again, we'll see you back here at our next Village Board meeting on May 11th at 7 p.m. And with that, I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second that. Good night, everybody. Good night, Tuckahoe. Be safe. Good night, Tuckahoe. Good night. Be safe. Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.